Good morning, Stampers and Crafters. As you saw at the beginning of this video, we are going to create this really cool little retirement card I made for my sister-in-law. Um, I don't have the original on hand. Obviously, I mailed it. Uh, so I'm, we're going to try to recreate that today. I had multiple requests and email requests. So we're going to try to recreate it together. And now I've seen these flip cards and I've actually never made them. So I thought, well, most of them I see has like three or four little flips on it. And I thought, well, why can't I do more where I can write out the word retired? So that's what we're going to do today. Now, I'm going to include a PDF on this blog post below um, where I'll put all the measurements. Um, as I was cutting things to make this video, I've been trying to write down all the measurements and all the scoring and things I did to create it. So I will try to include that below for you in the PDF. So let's get rolling. Um, First off, we're going to be using some new products that are coming out um, in January in the mini catalog and celebrations. The paper, this really just bright and cheery paper, it is called, and it's, it's going to be uh, one of the celebration items, it's called Sunshine and Rainbows. Let me pull this out. All right, I just got to show you. I mean, some of you may have already seen this. If you're a demonstrator, you've probably already pre-ordered it. But as you can see, I've been using the heck out of it. Look how bright and cheery this paper is. And it coordinates with a stamp set, a rainbow stamp set that, that's in the catalog also. But I decided, you know, it's retirement, you want something bright and cheery, we're going to use that. So that's what we did. So what I did is I did pick one of the pieces that I want as my cover sheet, okay? And then I took several different pieces to create the lettering, and which I think I have underneath here. So I did some different lettering cut from the different DSP. And that was going to go on the flaps. Well, then I was trying to figure out how I could put the words I wanted. As you saw, you know, it's got the, the retired and it says relax, eat the treats, indulge. I couldn't find enough stamps in my repertoire of stamps to come up with this. So what I did, most of us all have Microsoft Word. I went on Microsoft Word and I typed out the words and I'll even t uh, put the font that I used because the font that I found kind of coordinates with the font of the card. This is the inside greeting of the card I did, which is another stamp set. I'll show you that. So what I did is I kind of duplicated the font. and. Then, and you can do this right in your Word program, is you can choose the colors of the font you want. Okay, so I just changed each of the statements to coordinate with the coordinating letter of the retired. Okay, so it's really simple to do. And what I did is I also, all you need is regular copy paper is all I used for this. You don't need to put it on cardstock or anything like that. So what I'll do is I'll put the font that I used and I'll also put the size of the font that I used so that you can get it to fit on these little um, uh, map, these pieces that we're using, okay? So that'll all be in the PDF below. So let's start. So you need your card base, okay? And it's a regular A2 card base. So it's um, four and a quarter by five and a half, okay? Now originally when I did this, I was thinking I was gonna need a slim line to get that many letters and that many flaps on it, but I didn't. 
I could do it on a regular A2 car. So this is Daffodil Delight, which coordinates with our rainbow paper. And then I just made this piece the actual side of size of our card base. So this is four and a quarter by five and a half. And we're just gonna go ahead and attach that right to our card base. Um, I'm a glue person, you guys know that. For some of the parts of this card, I would highly recommend glue. And you're also going to need um, your uh, double-sided tape, your tear and tape, because it's nice and strong. You're gonna need a really strong tape for parts of this. Um, you'll see why. And there'll be other ways you can do what I'm gonna do, and I'll let you know those when we get to it. But I would suggest uh, use your glue and your tear and tape. Uh, in you could use a brad on one part of it. I've seen people do, but to me, just uh, glue is pretty much nice and sturdy, nice and strong, and that's what you need for this for the flap to hold together. Okay, so we've got our card ready. So. The first thing you do is you make your pull tab, okay? Let me get my bone folder because I like really crisp folds for this. So on the PDF, I'm going to include the where I scored it and how many times I scored it, okay? So for each letter of whatever you're using, so you can use retired, you could say happy, you know, it could be anything you want. So you'll just adjust to how many flaps you want on your card. Okay, so you have to also take into consideration what's going to fit onto your card base, I found. Okay, so we have our strip. This is our actual pull tab. And it's two inches, and I left it the entire 11 inches of the piece. Okay, we can trim off what we don't need. Okay, so if you're doing less lettering and less flaps, you'll trim accordingly. But I left it the full size to start this with. One, because I can't remember, um, since I don't have the original card anymore, I feel really bad about that. I had the video and I had a couple pictures that I took of it, but of course I mailed it to my sister-in-law who is actually retiring today, December 30th. So hopefully she likes it. I thought it was fun. She loves interactive and I'm not real great at interactive. I'm trying to learn, but let's do this together and see. So your very first score on this, okay, is gonna be two inches. So your first score is gonna be whatever size squares you're using. So if you're doing a wider flap, and this is wider, then your mats are gonna be wider, if that makes sense. But we're doing two inch, and our mats are two inch by two inch, okay? So we'll fold it. Now I gotta remember which way it folds, okay? So anyway, you score it at your first two inches. And then you're gonna score it every three eighths of an inch. Okay, that's all you need is three eighths of an inch in which you're going to be attaching these two. I will try to write down each of the measurements of the three eighths for you, but an easy way is just do your first two inches and then do three in, three eighths inch accordingly. Okay, so we have uh, seven letters here, but we need eight flaps. Okay, so you're going to do. Um, three eighths of an inch, okay, you'll do your two inch, and then you're gonna do three eighths of an inch seven times, okay? That'll make sense when we get up here. Because, and the only reason I'm doing it that way, is if you noticed on the video, I had a cover, a cover flap for it. Instead of starting right, right with the R for retired, I did a little cover one. So, those will be your scores. You know, I've got each of them scored.
Now we may, we're probably going to have to learn some of this together because like I said in the, in the beginning, this will be the second time I made this card and it'll only be the second time I've ever made a flip card. So we're kind of going to learn this a little bit together. But I know I want all of these score lines nice and crisp. I went ahead and scored them. Put them in your, put it in your paper cutter. Score your first, put it in your paper cutter, you know, your scoreboard. Score your first two inches, move it three eighths of an inch, score again, okay? You're gonna do that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight times, okay? So that's what we did. So depending on what word you're using, that'll, you can change that, okay? If you, if you have less letters or pictures or whatever it is you want to be your flat card. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get these scored nicely. Make sure they're scored nice and straight because this is for your, you know, folded straight, folded even. Okay, I have one more here. Sorry, sometimes some of that intricate stuff's a little hard on my hand, but we get it done. It is what it is. We work through it, right? Okay, so there is our actual pull tab flap. Now, on your card base, you're going to need another piece, and this one I did one inch, okay, measurements will be on the PDF, by four and a quarter, okay? This piece is going to be what goes on your card front, okay, and your pull tab slides through it, okay? That'll be what does the flipping of your card. So I'm going to guesstimate about where I want that. So let's kind of figure out. Okay, so go to your last fold. See, we've got it folded here. Okay, we're on our very last fold. So we want to figure... Oop, dropped it. Runner. So we want to figure out where that's going to sit on our car. So I'm going to leave a little bit of a gap here. And then if you see the bottom you'll have enough for your little pull tab here. So we have extra, remember I told you we have extra, and that's okay, because we can trim that off. So it's basically, see where our fold is right here? Okay, so now we wanna figure out where this goes. So we're gonna just slide that in there. And I'm gonna say it's probably Let me grab a ruler and I can tell you how high up I'm going. So I'm only going up about an inch. Okay. Now a real important part of this. Let me grab a pencil. I think I'm going to mark this. Just so I have an idea where I'm at here. Set that where I want it. And I'm just gonna mark that here. Okay, so now, real important, this piece. Get your tear and tape, or glue, you can use, or both, okay? Because you, you need this piece on the sides to be very, very secure, okay? So what I did, and you only need enough room for this to slide through, okay? So what I did, as I took a couple pieces of tear and tape. I ended up putting two next to each other on each edge. Pretty tough tear and tape. Okay. We've got two on each edge there. Okay, give us nice, secure. 
and I'm going to need tweezers. I need tweezers because I can never get the release paper off here. I don't know what it is about me and this release paper, but I have to admit the new tear and tape. Remember the red stuff? That orange stuff? Oh my god. I could never get the release off. God, that was years ago. Uh, we had that red kind of double-sided tape. You had to cut it. You could never get the release paper off. So happy that's gone. See, I can't even do it with tweezers. <laughs> it even a little bit more secure means if I can zoom in here a little maybe some of this will be easier if I move in for you how's that there we go now I'm just gonna put a little bit of glue if I'm not out and put a little bit of glue on those you know also when you do tape like this and you put a little bit of glue on it it actually gives you the opportunity to move it a little. Like if you set it down wrong, you actually have the room to move it. Now remember, I moved that up about an inch. So I'm coming up about an inch from the bottom. And then I'm going to square it up on here from side to side. You can pretty much eyeball that. Okay. And you want to make sure that's nice and secure. Nice, nice, nice. Nice, secure. And we'll let it dry while we work on our other stuff. So now, I cut, how many of these did I cut? I think I have eight mats. These are the mats that are two inches by two inches. And we're going to create our... Oh, you know what? I didn't do our, 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 uh, our front piece. So let me grab the stamp set that we did our front piece with. This is Friends of the Forest. How cute are these little guys? And they coordinate with the... Um, remember the deer punch we had at Christmas? Doink. There it is. Fits this. But look at this tiny little picture of a flower and some mushrooms. Fits perfectly on here. So let's do that. All I gotta do now is find my stemperatus. Here we go. And we also have to put the happy retirement on. But let me put this little image on here first. And then I'll show you how I did the happy retirement so it would fit on there. Now this is just two by two. So, you know, it's either way you put it on there. So let me check. This time, you know, I was looking at this set thinking, what would I use this little tiny image for well there you go i found something for it so i'm going to put it right down here at the bottom there we go and i'm pretty sure i forgot my ink this is kind of a last minute video um i put up the the card, I put it up on the Demonstrate Planning Place and a couple of my website, or not my website, but my Facebook page. And I have just gotten a ton of emails and requests for this tutorial. So in just the last two days, so I'm kind of impromptu doing this. So I apologize if I'm not super organized here, but you know what? We're just going to do it together. Um, I probably could have done a live video, but still haven't quite figured out the whole live video thing. Plus, if I mess up, I can edit. Ha ha. Okay, so we've got our little image. How cute is that? And then I did a happy retirement. And uh, I went through all my sets. And um, this one called Senior Years. 
has happy retirement, but it's too wide to fit across here. So what I did, set that aside, is I stamped them separately using the um, marker to stamp method. So we'll set the happy and center it. What do you think? Maybe down a little. How about right there? So we take that and then we're going to take our black stamp and write marker and we're going to color the word happy. Just happy. Just do the happy with your marker. And then stamp it. That came out perfect. I'm going to have to redo it. Let me get something to wipe my stamp off. Alright, and now we'll take and get my ink off that stamp. And we'll line up the retirement right below it. It's just like the perfect size for this. Oops, it moved. It moved, it moved. Doing this on pieces before you've attached them to like the mats and stuff, that's why I do that first. I do the same thing when I'm stamping my inner greetings. I'll do them separate before I attach them to the card in case you mess up, you don't have to redo the whole thing. Which, been there, done that. Seriously, been there, done that when I started so many times. I get all the way to the end greeting on the inside and mess up. So now we're just going to color the retirement. I love this technique because you can actually use any of your stamp it right markers and make any colors of stamping you want it's a neat technique look at that perfection clean that up when you use the marker it gets down in there quite a bit so I'm gonna go clean it up real well so that was the senior years where I got the greeting so you could do birthday too. So you could do this whole thing and it says happy or something and then make up something to the letters of happy. All right, so we got that. And now we're just gonna quickly color this. I'm just gonna bring in a few Stampin' Blends. Um, here we go, what have we got here? And I got some Poppy Parade for the mushrooms. Color those little guys. Tiny little image. That's why I'm always impressed with Stampin' Blends that these, you know, the bullet tip just gets right in there, gets these, because I'm trying to leave the little dots white. Look at that. So now I'm gonna color, what is this one? This is Mango Melody. I'll color the stem with mango. And I'll also color the daisy with the mango. Let's do a little bit of a pumpkin pie center on that daisy. Maybe bring in our old olive for the leaves of the daisy. And then since I'm staying nice and bright, I'm going to bring in some granny apple. And, oops, let's just use the other tip. And let's just do the grass a little bit. Nice and bright and colorful. Look at that. And voila. Then we're going to bring in our brushed brass. Okay, I can never say this fast. Brushed brass butterflies. There you go. Say it fast three times. And I'm just going to put a couple of these little butterflies on here because they're so darn cute. Let me find my picker upper tool. 
Let's grab one of these guys. Okay, maybe I'm gonna pick it up. Oh, hopefully it won't stick. And let's put it, let's put it up here. Move it up here. Put one there. Let's take maybe one of the little ones. And we'll put it down here by the daisy. They're so small. There we go. Put that in place. And there you go. How cute is that, right? Look at that. How cute is that? Oh, my camera won't focus. Or was it trying? All right, so we got that done. Now, we're going to attach that. Now, these pieces right here, the white pieces. Okay, remember our yellow is two by two. So the white ones I did with a really small matting. So the inserts are only one and seven eight by one and seven eight. Okay. And then I'm just going to glue that down. And you can use your favorite glue on this. You know, if you want to use tape or, you know, some people are really good at tape. I'm not. I don't know what my deal is with tape. You know, the and I love the, you know, the plus one. And if my runner always messes up, gets all wound up, tied up. So we're just going to center that on there. We got our first one done. So we're going to set that aside. Okay, for these letters, um, I already cut them out to save you watching me cut them out. You can use your little um, stamp and cut machine to do this. So I cut out the retired in the different colors of the DSP, remember? And the lettering I used for these is, you can use whatever lettering you have or want to use. I used, I think this is old, I don't, you know, I don't, might have been last year, but this playful alphabet had these block letters and they're small enough. So um, there's other um, alphabets you can use. Or you can stamp them. You can stamp your um, letters on there if you want. So what we'll do is we'll take and attach these. So what I'm going to do is I want to put them up towards the top. So you have room for your little saying. And our sayings... Remember, we cut the, we printed these on um, just regular copy paper. So we can take a. You can hand cut them out if you're good. Me, I can't normally cut a straight line to save my life. So I'm just going to trim these out. I mean, I can probably do it once I get get them a little smaller. I like the copy paper because you can actually see your cut line through it. They don't have to be any um, particular size, you know what I mean? Um, you just want the, the writing. So like this one, yeah, that's fine. And then I'm just going to take a pair of scissors and maybe trim it a little. Because we only want the word. We don't really need all the paper. See, I could, look at that. I couldn't even cut a straight line. Ah, I'm telling you. And it was a little piece. So we'll do that with each of them. And move that aside for a second. And then I'm just going to take a little bit of glue. You can use your tape here. I 
think I need to get another glue bottle. Now, oops, I have a runner. If you're using glue on this copy paper, use very little because it'll, you know, kind of make it soggy depending on, you know, what your copy paper is. Oops. And voila. Now we're going to connect that one to a mat. I will go through and do the rest of these letters like that. I will fast forward the video for you so you don't have to painfully watch me try to cut something straight with my scissors. So we just attach it to our mat. And I will fast forward through this. Okay, so as you see, I lost the greeting for the E. Weirdness. And for some reason, I have an extra yellow square. So, we'll hope that little greeting shows up or I have to print another one. They're so small, it's got to be here somewhere. I'm going to guess it landed on the floor somewhere. Okay, so anyway, so now what we're going to do, bring in our card base. We're going to slide our, our uh, thing through there. And now, the only part of this piece that is going to attach to the card is right on this strip right here. Okay? Right here. So, you want to get it leveled up or, you know, squared up in your spot. Okay? And then you're going to have it folded to the last one. And remember, you want to leave a little gap there just because you want to leave a little gap there. And now, again, I suggest using your double-sided tape or your glue. So I'm going to use my glue on this little flat right here. Because we know that's going to hold. And then we're just going to make sure it's square. And glue it down. Hold that in place for a second. Okay, so now, see, I'm going to hold that for a minute, but now you have your... Hopefully I just did that right. So, what we got to do is our first one is the last one. And it goes right on the flat. Still looking for the E printout to come out. I'll have to print another one. So now this one you'll do the whole the whole piece, okay? I am out of 
of loop. So I'm going to just glue down this last one because you're you're gluing you're gluing it to the strip. Make sure you don't and go right to the edge of where your score mark is. Let me I'll zoom in on this. Make sure you don't go over your score line. If I can move in a little bit for you on this part. Okay, so now you'll take your E, which I'm missing my greeting, and you will only attach right in the score area. Okay, so you can use your tape or you can use glue, which I'm a glue person. So I just put it right in that spot. Make sure you don't. I should just go open another glue, huh? So I'm just going to put it right across there. And this one is going to go right at the score line. Make sure they're squared up even. And now we grab our next one. Okay, let me make sure I'm doing the colors I want. I wanted this I wanted this bright pink one on the end here, so you know I hope I did this right. Yes, I did. Okay. So now we'll do the same thing. Next one. It might be easier if you did use the double-sided tape when you're doing this. Let's try it. It might be easier. I'm all thumbs today. So let's go ahead and just put a little piece of tearing tape across each of those sections. Normally I use glue because I can move it, but apparently my glue bottle is empty. And as I'm sitting here doing this video, I'm thinking, I better have more glue. There's nothing worse for a paper crafter than to run out of glue. I usually keep, you know, several bottles. Okay. Let's do it that way. Now let's make sure I spell this right. Make sure I'm not getting them stuck. Okay. All right. Now we I. Go right at your score mark. You don't want to go over it, but you want to go right at it. Oh, that's why I have an extra yellow. I forgot to mount my T. Usually I'm a lot more organized than this, you guys. Sorry. But you know what? It's the holidays and... I figured I'd just try to quickly put this video together. Because when I first saw this technique, I was I remember trying to find somebody that did it. And I think uh, I've seen the sideways ones and um, they only have like two or three little flaps. So I wasn't even sure this could be done. Really cool. Hopefully, she got her card. 
by today, since today's her day. But it was kind of impromptu last minute. I just couldn't figure out uh, what kind of card to send her. And my sister was talking to me and she, she loves it when your cards are interactive. And it's like, oh gosh, okay. And now our very last one is the cover. So the part that takes the longest is just making the little flaps you want. So you could be, you know, as detailed or not as detailed as you want. You could just stamp things on them. And I'm going to line this last one up. And we're going to see if it works. You ready? You ready? Look at that and see how why I said make sure you score everything before you put it together because see then it lays nice and flat and then watch this doink, 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 doink. look at that how fun is that okay so now you have this extra right here right remedy where is it where is it I'm just gonna take my tag punch and I'm gonna pull this down a little because I'm not remembering how far my tag punch is going to go so before I trim it I'm going to try it and get it in there why my hands in the middle there we go and let me see if I need to go shorter mm, yeah we need to go considerably shorter okay let me trim a little of this off Now put it in. A lot of times I like to look at the bottom of my punch to make sure I'm in there square. Let's see if that one's short enough. Mm, I would, uh, I'm thinking I really want to go a little bit shorter because I kind of want this to be able to sit fit in an A2 envelope so I'm going to trim that just the letter and we're going to be putting a, um, a, a pull ribbon on it I'll show you Let me get this in there I mean you could obviously do this prior to assembly but I kind of didn't want to get it wrong There we go. Okay, so now we're going to take a ribbon. I almost messed that up. So I'm going to take a little piece of daffodil ribbon here. And I'm going to put it through our hole. And then you just put the two tail pieces back through the loop. Sorry, my my hand has a little bit of trouble doing some of this. But we'll get it. We'll get it. So I'm going to tuck those two tails through that loop. And then we're going to pull it. Oops, and I tore it. Oh, my. We can repair that, though. Let's see, how would we repair it? You know what? We're just going to... I'm going to put another little reinforcement here on the back of it. Because, see, I punched it wrong. But that's okay. I can repair it here. Which is okay. It'll make it the pull tab a little more reinforced when we do this. See, this is a uh, real time oopses. I lost a word and I punched wrong. But we're gonna save it because we have this little piece and we're gonna put it on the back side, line it up. 
And the ribbons are going to cover this little front piece anyway. So fold it in half. If I come through the back side, this time might be easier for me. Pull it through the hole. And then take your two tails and pull down through the loop. See there? And you have a little pull ribbon. And then you're just going to trim it off. You don't need a lot. You just need something for them to be able to grab. I always like to kind of cut mine at a kind of an angle just for make it look interesting. So you have your little tab. And then I normally just take a marker. Sorry about that. I'm going to put it all the way up here. And I just write small... I mean, it's kind of a given, but... It's a right pull. So there you go. They grab a little ribbon. I have to find my E word. So I'll have to fix that. Okay, so that's all. Now you know why this has to be really secure. Because watch as this goes through. Okay, so it's pulling through this piece so the biggest thing I learned about making this card is that piece right here needs to be very secure on the sides okay so if you just do like a mat and add a piece you could also use um, brads okay brads would hold that nice and secure but I didn't I did a straight down DSB to my card okay let me put that back up and I went ahead and colored this this is the congratulations came from the peaceful moments um, I felt that it kind of matched the um, font of I love this set in the moment love 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 it's women I mean, anything that empowers women, you gotta love it. I know, guys. Sorry. I'm loving you. I just like to empower women. Alright, so we're just gonna put a, our insert in there. Make sure I'm doing the right way. I was also gonna show you real quick. There's our insert. See if your see if your ribbon is depending on what kind of ribbon you use. If it's kind of loose, you know where this little thing is here. Grab a. I know I have one. Grab a glue dot and just put it under. Let me pull that open a little. Under that flap of that ribbon right there tuck it in there and then pull your ribbon tight and squeeze it okay so that'll just keep that as as tight because your glue dots right under there and there you go you got a nice tight ribbon and there it is so this was done with one two three four five six seven eight flaps and that's on an a2 card so I bet if you're doing something like birthday or something like that you could probably do it same concept you're going to do the same measurements I would personally because it fits on the page good and you would do you would just add additional scores and mats they're all going to go the same distance apart and that is it I mean I, I've never really done one of these so there probably may be an easier way to do it this is how I did it, and I wanted to share it with you, and I hope you enjoyed it today. I will put, I'll type up a PDF and um, attach it to my blog, and a printable PDF for you. So, thank you for watching today, and I hope you have a happy new year, and a happy stampin' day. Bye-bye now. Be safe.